Prevet comrades, here it is, finally. I know a lot of you have been waiting for a test of 8V3 in real ballistic gelatin, and I'm excited to finally bring it to you. If some of you are already going, huh? Don't worry, ammunition can be confusing, and this little pocket of nerdery is especially weird, but I'll try to fill in all the holes before we get started. By and large, most hollow point rifle bullets are not designed or intended to expand like hollow point pistol bullets are. The open tip is just an artifact of the manufacturing process. Nevertheless, some hollow point rifle ammunition does reliably fragment. Then again, the vast majority of Russian hollow point ammunition does not fragment or expand. But wait, there's more. The 8M3 effect bullet from Ulyanovsk did reliably fra fragment. The packaging indicated that it was intended for hunting and it was widely available in the US for some time before it dried up. Then SG Ammo brought the bullet back into the country under the Tool Ammo brand in an SG exclusive. Now I tested it on the chopping block and other channels tested it as well. It fragmented explosively in my test, but not on other channel's tests, which led to some speculation that my result was a fluke. While that's certainly possible, the discrepancy is more likely a result of the fact that clear gel is less dense than real ballistic gelatin, so bullets fragment less reliably in clear gel. So now we come full circle with this similar looking bullet from Red Army Standard. The 8V3 that we'll be testing today is also a lead core steel jacketed hollow point, just like the 8M3, but it has a boat tail rather than a flat base like the 8M3. 8V3 also has a lacquered steel case, which is reported to be a lot more corrosion resistant than the polymer co coated steel cases more commonly used in Russian ammo. As if this topic wasn't complicated enough, lots of well-meaning folks on the interwebs have pointed out that 8M3 has cuts on the inside of the jacket that you can feel with a small paper clip or wire. 8V3 has these cuts too, so it ought to blow apart like a madman, right? Well, maybe. It turns out that lots of Russian hollow point ammo has the same, or at least similar looking cuts. So how can we tell if this bullet is useful for defense? We head out to the range and shoot 762 by 39 millimeter 8V3 Red Army Standard 124 grain hollow point boat tail through my 16 inch Wasser 1063 into calibrated 10% organic ge ordnance gelatin. That's how. If you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff, take a look at our sponsor, TNVC.com, your source for quality night vision gear to make you the bump in the night. So, my dudes, at first glance, this looks ridiculously impressive. Monster temporary stretch cavity, right? Well, kind of. Um, as we often see for yawing bullets, it's a sort of two-dimensional affair. Uh, I'll give you a couple of different glances at it from a few different angles, but this huge temporary stretch cavity is mostly in one plane because this bullet did not expand or fragment. It did yaw very early. So if you're looking for a yawing bullet, <laughs> this is a really good choice because it did it almost immediately. And yes, as far as that goes, excellent, perfect performance for a yawing bullet. But as I've told you before, I don't believe that yaw is a particularly effective wounding mechanism. If you look at the high speed, the size of the temporary stretch cavity is pretty impressive, but compared to 
other 7.6 2x39 that does expand and or fragment, it's not nearly as good. Let's get some measurements. Total penetration, 23.9 inches. The neck, one and a half inches long. Temporary stretch cavity, 11 inches by four inches. Along the top here, very little fragmentation, just a couple of pieces dropped out of the tail of the bullet as it finished its yaw cycle. And here's where it came to rest. As is fairly typical, it curved a bit, but not nearly as much as you often see with yawing bullets. You can see that the tip did bend over just a little bit. A little bit of lead squished out the front. A little bit of lead squished out the back. But yeah, no fragmentation, no expansion. All right, that was spectacularly lame. There was no fragmentation whatsoever. The bullet did yaw, of course. All Spitzer-shaped rifle bullets yaw in gel or tissue, and in this case, the yaw occurred relatively early. The neck, or portion of the wound track before the significant disruption occurs, was less than two inches. That would be heckin' good for any bullet type, but it's especially short for a bullet that only yaws. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably because the unusually large cavity in the nose makes this bullet even more base heavy than is normal for a rifle bullet, but I'm not a particle physician, so what would I know? In any case, the temporary stretch cavity observed on high speed was rather unimpressive, although the length of the disturbed area in the gelatin was pretty long. So, what does this mean for the ongoing saga of the case of the Russian hollow point? Dude, if you have, like, a really long flight ahead of you, it would be a great time to go down the rabbit hole of all the various types of 762 by 39 millimeter hollow point ammunition that has been imported and lot numbers and tests posted to forums and the tube utes and using water and clear gel and meat and live animals and organic ballistic gelatin. If you're a bullet nerd like me, it's fascinating stuff trying to Nancy Drew which bullet was used in which loads at which points in time. But the one thing that remains consistent throughout the various field reports is that performance is inconsistent. That inconsistency could be a result of different test media. Uh, bullets that readily fragment in water, living tissue, or ballistic gelatin seem to have a much harder time fragmenting in clear gel because it is a synthetic material with no water and therefore a much lower specific gravity. Or the inconsistency could be introduced by variables introduced by people conducting the informal tests, including myself. But the most likely source of the confusion is that Russian ammo makers don't really grok the American ammo market. So they don't understand why they shouldn't just use whatever component they happen to have handy. And they constantly change propellant, bullet, and anything else that strikes their fancy. You're lucky if you get something with a bullet weight within two or three grains of nominal. My personal opinion is that the early lots of Uli and Sapsen 8M3 reliably fragged, and the first batch of relatively recent 8M3 Tula that I tested will also reliably fragment. But I wouldn't count on any of that. If you are a normal person, none of that really matters. And the only important takeaway is that Russian hollow point ammunition does not reliably or consistently perform any differently than full metal jacket. My recommendations for 762 by 39 millimeter defense ammunition remain the same as they have been for a long time. Federal fusion is the very best available, terminally speaking. Other soft points are also very good. I have not yet tested any soft point in this caliber that failed to expand. And for that matter, Russian soft points in general have done very well in other calibers too. If my primary fighting rifle was an AK, I'd probably buy enough fusion to zero and fill a few mags and buy literally whatever 120-ish grain soft point was cheapest for range and pocky lips ammo. But that's just like my opinion, man. And it's worth every cent you paid for it. If you think I missed something here, I'd love to hear it. 
This topic is about as complicated as you care to make it, so we can deep dive in the comments if you want. I hope you found this video informative, or at the very least entertaining. If you think I've earned it, please help support our channel by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. That's not just some BS that YouTubers say at the end of videos. All those actions are forms of engagement that drive the decisions made by the algorithm, so that tells YouTube that you like watching gun videos. And besides, subscribing doesn't really mean anything anymore, so make sure you check that little bell icon down below so you can actually get a notification when we post a new video. If you want to find out how to rent a Phantom V642 or other high-speed camera, just like the one that I used to capture the video in this video, contact Aimed Research. Their contact info is down there in that thing that nobody reads right there. Good luck. We're all counting on you.